then I wanted to speak about an album I've been listening to since it dropped the other day and absolutely love from an artist that I at first didn't get. At first, I have to be honest, I thought Lancey Foe was like a, was like a, a bit of a young fuck beg, a bit of a carty beg. His style, um, you know, his, his, even his hair, the way he kind of inflections on his voice, so the effects on his voice, some of the beats he was choosing, it kind of felt like he was doing like a UK version of that. And for the longest time, which is absolutely funny, who's, who's the other guy? I forgot his fucking name now. The one that's been accused of um, doing uh, the madness with that girl. I forgot his name. But that kid who was the model for Supreme, and I forgot his name now, when I remember it, or if you do, put it in the comments. At the time when they were both coming up, he was the preferred one. And Lancey was kind of, like I said, the one that people were kind of looking at, like the UK designer. Remember when designer was coming up, everyone was looking at him like he was just cutting or copying Future's flow, his cadence, even his voice sounded similar. But the thing that I wanted to say categorically is that this is why it's important to give artists a chance because you never know if, if an artist is going to turn out to be a Lancey foe or is going to turn out to be a designer. Because I think Lantifo did start out maybe idolizing and looking up to people like a young thug and a Playboy Carti. Because why wouldn't you? Because they're two people in their kind of, you know, niche of whatever music they make, however you describe it. They're two of the leaders in it, right? They do it the best. No one can imitate or copy what they do in any way, shape or form. So it makes sense for someone as young as Lantifo to look at them and think, hey, this is where I want to go. Especially someone like Playboy Carti, who they might be the same age or in the same kind of age group. And then maybe the young thugs a bit older you've got some peers there that you can kind of look at because i think peers are usually like two years above two years under or something in that group right but still it's motivation it's mentorship from afar it works out but you never know who's going to develop and who's going to actually evolve the artistry clearly this kid lancy folk cares about his music he cares about his artistry he cares about his vision how even the covers right are really interesting he even goes to an effort to design and put together pretty decent single covers which is usually a good sign that somebody really cares about their craft and isn't just phoning it in and putting stock images that they find on flipping you know what uh, getty images or wherever they find these crappy images and um i really like this album life in hell and i have to say having listened to all these albums all these eps this might be his magnus opus i've said it before on twitter i'll share it again here this life in hell is lancy foe's magnus opus this is his greatest work this is a this is the best representation of his sound the best representation of what he presents or what he offers as an artist especially as a uk artist because for the most part the uk is kind of dominated by like what afro beats um uk rap drill and that's basically it right there's not really else much else you can do in terms of movement even Ama piano hasn't really taken off in a way that it has done in other places like especially in south africa you know we don't really have our own you know artists here who are really smashing it we might have some nights and stuff but the Ama piano scene hasn't really popped off that well here but afro beats uk rap and drill is really the kind of the forebearers and the leaders in terms of pushing things forward of course grime is still there but in terms of actually influencing culture i think those three i mentioned prior are the ones that are really doing it so it's quite nice when you hear someone like a Lancey Foe basically do his version of whatever's happening in the States at the moment. And that's what I like about it is that it doesn't necessarily sound like it's coming through an American lens. It kind of sounds like somebody, and it also doesn't sound like an expat. I don't know how to describe it. It sounds very grounded in what we do here in the UK. And it kind of makes you proud that we kind of have somebody who's able to kind of... Um, battle in that kind of arena with the playboy carties the uzis and stuff because i'd put him up there i don't care he hasn't maybe got discography as some people would say but i think in terms of those two leaders he's definitely in that kind of conversation he could definitely hold his own in that regard um the musicality the melodies uh the structure of the songs um the fact that he's got these random interludes that are not interludes where he's just croning and just adding an effect and just singing it's beautiful absolutely beautiful and i think um one of the tracks that kind of stands out to me that I've been absolutely playing on repeat when I've been in the flipping gym is this track here called 12th Hour. It really hit home for me, especially now going through flipping Sober October, abstaining from all the um, madness that I've been on. And there's a bar here, if I'm not mistaken. Is it here? Is this the one? It must be the one, right? Where he's like money and something. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Um, this is the one. So 12th, um, 12th Hour. Uh, on the album Life in Hell by Lancey Foe is definitely my standout because there's this bar here which I absolutely love that really I feel like speaks to me 
um, especially during, you know, flipping COVID times. And it's a verse here that starts off saying, I close my eyes, I'm seeing my life in front of me. I own my vibe, look afar, look wide, ain't nothing under me. In disguise, I can't let them uncover me. Look in her eyes, I see her, she's in love with me. Ride or die, she says she's gonna walk in blood. Rise and shine every day that I'm under the sun. What's gonna be my fate? Is it money or drugs? I'ma be a late to my death. I was busy getting stuck, stuck, stuck. You don't understand, you don't understand. You don't understand, yeah, yeah. Oh, you don't understand, you don't understand. You don't understand, yeah, yeah. Even singing that now just gets me my feels. But this bar right here, what's gonna be my fate? Is it money or drugs? Money or drugs. And this has been my flipping conundrum for minute zero. You know, I like to enjoy myself. I like to go out there and party and have a good time. But I've also got, you know, a burning ambition to make it in life and to achieve all my dreams and to basically pull myself out from the flipping debts of poverty and, you know, rewrite the narrative of my flipping family and whatnot and my lineage and whatnot and kind of break whatever generational curse of flipping poverty that might exist and hovering over us. You know, like most African families, we have these weird superstitions that exist and stuff. But just in general, just kind of set a new flipping precedent and create generational wealth and shit and all these kind of great you know grandiose delusions of grandeur that i may have or plans or hubris whatever you may be calling it is really at odds when it comes to my lifestyle right because i like to go out and have fun and that stuff doesn't necessarily um doesn't necessarily go well with ambition and dreams and, and all that stuff you need to be focused and unfortunately for most of us we're not ozzy osborne we're not keith richards we can't you know is only recently I think Ozzy Osbourne from time he had his recent health scare but only recently that guy was still racking up lines allegedly was still swigging whiskey allegedly and still having a good time and but then he had his recent health scare and he had to you know rein it back in again and be a little bit more sensible and I think most of us would wish we could be Ozzy most of us wish we could be Keith Richards but we can't we're not those people we don't have the, the minerals we don't have the DNA uh, we haven't got it so we have to balance it or we have to basically abstain from one to get the other thing and much like you know the often maligned Gary Vee who's actually got some points I know he might be a little bit you know full of shit sometimes but one thing that stuck out to me that I remember him saying a long time ago was that if you actually want to achieve your dreams you just have to be honest with yourself and say especially if you're working a full-time job or doing other things you have to commit the free time that you have to your dreams that's the only way you're going to get to do it there is no waiting for the perfect time there is no saving up money quitting and then starting your dream no do it right now the only time you can do it is the times that you're free so it's from like 6 to 12 is your time to kind of do your dream and do your dream chase which is difficult to do every day especially if you have a family you have friends you have obligations hard to make it work but it's the only way to get it done because the other way, indulging yourself in the money and indulging yourself in the drugs, uh, you know, which I would just, which I would attach to the, um, the darker side of things, the nightlife side of things, the hedonism side of things, the materialistic side of things, isn't going to get you where you need to go. So you're going to have to sit there one day and decide, hey, should I spend my hundred, uh, my last hundred quid on a new jacket or should I get these pictures printed? Should I get this f this picture f framed? Should I inquire about a gallery to whatever? What? You have to think about these things constantly. And the hard truth, the hard reality of it is, you know, in order to get the money, you basically need to give up the drugs or put it to one side. It just is what it is. So when I heard this guy croning, what's going to be my fate? Is it money or drugs? Money or drugs? Yeah, yeah. I am absolutely feeling it and swaying from side to side thinking, you know, this is going to be this. This is it. This is my guy, man. So I'm for it 100 percent. And going back to the actual album track list, I don't think you'll find a better. I'm going to say. I don't think you're going to find a better one, two, three, four, five, six track back to back spinning ever. Because I like that a lot with albums. When you go, sometimes some, out, some artists don't do it. They don't actually focus on the sequencing and don't really care. They just put all their favorite tracks on, on an album, don't care what order they're in, and then you just listen to them. But some artists, I think Lancey Foe included, he sequences it in a way where there is a kind of a flow and a theme, you know, so you can, it's basically telling a story without being too overt and having unnecessary skits. So I think there's no better run than from track four all the way to track nine 12 hour 
sun moon colors girl and gun i feel like i'm sorry i feel like i'm me all night long like incredible incredible tracks and to be honest the tracks with the features might be the worst on there which goes to show how strong of an artist he is. Um, the J Star one, I'm not really, you know, I'm not, I don't really not that offended by. I know a lot of fans on the subreddit are really going hard at J Star and flipping, saying he ruins the song. But I don't really mind him too tough. But I think the rest of the features, the Kate Chinado features, I could probably live without them, as good as they are. The Zero Seven Shakes feature as well feels a bit weird. It feels like a song that maybe Zero Seven Shake had on. She was planning to put on her album that she wanted Last Year to jump on, but she never used it. And then he basically claimed it or something. It feels like one of those kind of tracks. It doesn't necessarily fit with anything. It kind of, I would have preferred to have heard, this is what I think in my head. I would have preferred to have heard Zero Seven Shake on a Lancey Foe type beat as opposed to Lancey Foe on a Zero Seven Shake type beat. Do you know what I mean? Especially if it's on his album. I would have preferred it that way. Because if he's going to be on her album, fair enough. But if it's a this album, that's why it makes me think that most likely this was a feature she wanted to put on her own album, but it didn't work out. And then she kind of switched it. And or it, maybe it's not coming out yet. I don't really know. So the Kate and others features, I'm not really too too big on, to be completely honest. Um, but I like the rest of it. And I think the rest of it is absolutely solid. The only thing I'd say is another sticking point that I would say just a little nitpicky thing. The Spirit of Two Ecstasy is really cool like as a track opening track to kind of get you in a mood but i find it odd that the sample with wiley is at the end i think or did it again i'm pretty sure it's at the end i did it again there's a really cool sample um of a voice note wiley basically saying that lance is his guy yeah there's a go at the end of it right there's an outro with wiley on it on the second track which doesn't make sense because on the on the actual voice mode stuff, Wiley's like, oh, you better put this at the start of your album, right? One of those kind of things. And I think it would have worked really well at the end of Spirit of Ecstasy. As he's croning, you hear flipping, you know, Wiley's voice just piercing or just leaking through that track and leading into I did it, did it again. I think that would be pretty hard. But for some reason, he put it at the end of that track, which should be at the end of the first track. That was the only thing that was a bit weird. But... Honestly, man, this album is really, really amazing. This is this is Lancey Foe's Magnus Opus. For me, it's a 10 out of 10, even with those other things included. Like I said, get rid of the Cage Nada tracks and I'm ready to roll. The 07 Shake track, I can kind of leave it to one side. The rest of it, absolutely heavenly. Um, 12th Hour is definitely my my banger. Um, Lancey or Lancey is definitely another one. What an absolutely incredible hook, man. This song actually, this is going to go off on the live show. Oh yeah, talking about a live show. He's performing on what? November 17th and 18th, I think at Earth. I think the last show on the Friday is sold out, but the first show on the Thursday is still got tickets available. So check it out if you're interested. I'm definitely going to be at one of the shows. I think I'm going to try to get the last show on the Friday tickets just because it's a Friday. Why not go a bit crazy, watch him perform, go into a mosh pit, sing the songs, you know, word for word, see what it's like performing live. And the one thing I'm also not going to do because I, I like the, I like the bit of mystery because I'm not too sure. And even on the album, the bits and pieces where it felt like he might have broken up with his um, supermodel entrepreneur girlfriend who, are, you know, they're kind of known to be really stunty and, you know, look amazing together in terms of their outfits and just looking incredibly attractive. I'm not too sure if they're actually broken up or not. I don't want to research it and find out anything, but there were some bars in the album that made me think, you know, he might be newly single. I don't know. But I'll, I say that to say... I like it where you just listen to an album just on the strength of the music. You don't really dig too deep into the guy's background, where he's from. I don't give a fuck. I'm just listening to it purely from an artistic point of view and it's fucking pulling at my heartstrings. It's got me. So just imagine if I find out some stuff about him and it fucking, you know, it marries up with how I view the world or whatever. I'll be like, ah. But yeah, Lancey Foe, Life in Hell, absolutely phenomenal album. Cannot wait to see the guy live. I'm really hoping it's a good live performance. I'm hoping he's not going to perform with a backing track. Please don't perform with a vocal backing track. I beg you. I want to hear his flipping breathing. I want to hear him being out of breath. I want to hear him mispronouncing words. I don't give a fuck. I much prefer all my rappers to perform with an actual instrumental without performing with the backing track because at that point you might as well listen to it at home but um i think it's going to be a good show i haven't searched anything i don't know what it's going to look like but i think it's going to be a good show so i'm really looking forward to that but i recommend if you haven't already please check out lancey first life in hell it might be my album of the year especially heading into the end of the year now we're at the business end this might be end of the year and the fact that drake and flipping 21 savage didn't drop that weekend too was a blessing i think for him because all ears and eyes especially for me were on him because i was really looking forward to that drake and 21 album and also i think um 
what's his face? Metro Boomin was meant to come out that day too. So a lot of big hitters were, you know, kind of pushed their albums back. This dropped, I think it might have dropped the same weekend as Flipping Taylor Swift, but I'm not listening to Taylor Swift, am I? So that didn't really matter. So big up Lance Hufo. What an incredible album. Life in Hell, definitely a Magnus Opus, a 10 out of 10 for me. And I can't wait to see that kid 